Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I realized it's been a while since I have done a bushcraft pack loadout for you guys. I intended to do one earlier this year, and then I found out that Bushcraft Outfitters was going out of business, and I thought, okay, I need to start looking for an alternative tarp and uh, poncho recommendations, things like that, before I do a loadout. So I'm not recommending gear that you can no longer get. Uh, it's important to me to have gear that I am personally carrying that each one of you is able to obtain. So for me, um, as a part of this channel, that is something that's important. I don't want to load out my pack and say, here's this great, awesome tarp, but you can't get it anymore. So I set aside my Bushcraft Outfitters tarp and poncho. I recently did review on the ActFire uh, poncho and the Pathfinder tarp, so I have found um, adequate replacements. In fact, I really, really, uh, for the price, am absolutely amazed at that Pathfinder tarp. Quick update, we had a surprise mountain storm up here in the middle of this drought, and I happened to be out here in that storm, put up that Pathfinder tarp, sheltered under it in a nice heavy uh, rain that lasted for a couple hours and the tarp worked amazing so if you haven't seen the review go back check out the review on the pathfinder tarp um, two thumbs up couldn't be happier held up great in a rainstorm anyway let's jump right in guys uh summer this is my summer bushcraft pack i have a completely different setup for winter in the winter I uh, build a base camp, I like canvas, I like wool, I like that traditional feel. So I have a bigger pack, it's probably at least 10, 12 pounds heavier because of the canvas and the wool, but uh, that's what I like to do in the winter. I, I just really like that traditional feel, having a big long fire, base camp, building a shelter or throwing up the canvas tarp, rolling up in a wool blanket by the fire. Summer. I usually don't do a base camp. It's more of a, I just take off, set up a camp for part of the day, maybe take off again, camp somewhere overnight, whatever. It's I'm always on the move, so weight is important. So this pack is the 511 Tactical Rush 12. I also have the Rush 24, and I will switch over to the 24 if I know I'm going to be out for a couple days and I want to carry more food. But uh, for a day or two, this Rush 12 is perfect. And I added the waist belt. You can buy the waist belt from 511 Tactical. And that's important to me uh, to be able to carry part of the weight on my hips. So I ordered their weight, uh, waist belt, which is very, very nicely padded. I mean, feels very comfortable on my waist and has extra attachment points if I wanted to carry an extra water bottle, knife, whatever. That's really nice. You've got attachment points on very comfortable shoulder straps. Nice padding back here. I really like this pack. And on the bottom, I've added straps. There's a place to add straps and put on a pad which I actually was uh, thankful that uh, I have a pad like this when that surprise rainstorm hit because I also have a trash bag in here and when it's dry, I usually just grab pine needles, fur boughs, lay it on top or make a bed. But that rain came on so unexpected and uh, I was just glad to have something like this. So... Let's talk about real quick what's on my belt and in my pockets, and then we'll load out the pack that way. If you're wondering where something is, where's this knife, where's this hatchet, how come it's not in this pack? It's because it's on me. Okay guys, on the belt. Uh, important part of my setup is I always have my tools that I'm gonna use on my belt. I've got my SC6 right here, ready to go. That gets used a lot. An extra ferro rod on the sheath, folding saw, 
pocket boy outback edition this thing gets used a lot cutting fat wood out here and sawing poles and things other side i just did a uh, video for you guys on the, my wilderness edc knife i have the little becker bk14 again both my knives have been modified and now carry 90 degree spines and on this side i have the grand Sportsbrook hand hatchet which depending on what i'm doing out here sometimes gets used more than anything else that i carry with me so these things are always on my belt in my pocket is always a bandana multiple uses uh, especially when I'm getting uh, fatwood scrapings and then moving them to a fire location. I might throw some uh, stinging nettle leaves or things in here. I just used it recently around my neck on a hot day, soaked with water. I have an extra ferro rod that's in my pocket at all times. A nice big one and striker, even though both knives will work. I like to have the striker. And in my other pocket, a little harder to get to, I always have, now that I've discovered this, I just did a review on this too. This is that uh, micro card cord from Atwood. So I've got, I think it's uh, like 120 feet on here. My cutter's right there. I don't even have to mess with the knife. I just cut the cordage through here and then tuck it right in this slot and on the bottom which is really cool there's a holder for a small lighter so I can burn the cord plus I have an extra fire starter so that rides in my other pocket so I've always got cordage along with uh, some other type of knife and usually it is the Victorinox Ranger, this is the Pathfinder edition from Self-Reliance Outfitters that comes in green. Amazon only has the bright red. And I also have, oh, I forgot. I do have one more thing down here in this pocket. Sorry about that. I have a little tiny Altoids tin. It's wrapped in plastic so that it doesn't uh, leak. But there's some cotton balls saturated with petroleum jelly in there. For winter time, that is important. Okay, so you see that's what's on my belt, what's in my pockets. Anytime I'm out here walking around, my pack might be hanging on the side of a tree. My tools, cordage, fire starting gear, all of those things are distributed on my body at all times. If I go very far, water goes with me as well. So let's get into the pack. On the outside, it's got compression straps several years ago i bought this cheap shovel on amazon you can just type in survival shovel and these things pop up and i have absolutely beat the tar out of this thing i have slammed it into hard soil it has bounced off rocks more times than i can count uh I have chopped through roots with it. I've sawed. The saw actually works well for sawing through roots in the dirt. And uh, the only thing that's ever happened is the plastic cap on the butt popped off. And I have no idea where it is. So I just put Gorilla Tape over the end. But it's crazy because this thing costs like around, what is it, nine? I think I paid nine bucks at the time for it. They've probably gone up. But uh, no specific brand or anything. There's It just absolutely amazes me that something so cheap I can just literally abuse and abuse year after year. <laughs> I've dug Dakota hole fires with it. It's highly recommended. So on the other side, condor pouch, which has my 38 ounce stainless steel Nalgene. And underneath that, I have a Pathfinder cup which uh, takes care of my cooking. I have the uh, lid and the spreader so that if I want to hang it over a fire, 
and of course having the lid that goes on the uh, top of the cup will just bring my water to a boil much quicker than being out in the open especially if there's any kind of breeze or cold air and in the side pocket here I have my complete water filtration system which I'll just take everything out here surgical tubing a couple feet of that and a short piece and my hydro blue which I've used for years now the hydro blue VersaFlow so the tubing snaps right on the end I use the short piece on the gray end just to set it down into my uh, water bottle the long piece I will use on the blue end if I want to drop this end in the stream and drink directly through it and one of the little CNOC or Canock, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, outdoors bag. So just open this piece up, slide the end off, fill this up with water, and then I can gravity flow. You've, I've done it on videos, or squeeze this down into the water bottle, clip it on the side of my pack if it's refilled, and carry an extra two liters of water with me besides the 38 ounces in my bottle. Let me pause you guys for a second. Okay, and by the way, the weight of the pack is roughly around 18 pounds, which for me is very light. Um, I could subtract or add a few things and bring it up to 20 real easy or uh, take a couple extras out that I really don't need uh, if I'm just out hiking for the day and it's I'm sure it's going to be nice weather. For example, I can leave the pad out and drop the weight down to as light as about 16 and a half either way it's no more than eight percent of my body weight and eight to ten percent is a good good weight for being able to move light and fast so i'm never over eight percent with my summer pack whereas my winter pack is quite a bit more but again i'm not moving around near as much and if i am my wool blankets and my canvas tarp and things, that's 10 pounds right there, will be set up in a base camp. And then when I go out hiking, I've lost 10 pounds off the pack right away. So, I really like this setup on the 511 tactical packs. This thing is like 1050 Cordura, very heavy. Drug it through the brush out here all year this year, doing great. I have. My Esbit pocket stove, which I do pretty much all my summer cooking on because you can't have fire right now. I've got four tabs in there, some tin foil, and I'm just keeping that in a little military compass pouch because it fits perfect. Leather gloves, self-explanatory bandana i have again in one in my pocket one in here this little uh, survival fishing kit which comes in handy in the summer as the creeks dry up the fish get trapped in the little holes sometimes you can uh, use an emergency survival spear uh, stuff like this in the bigger holes little comes in handy Gorilla tape and bank line down in here. I've got a couple. I've got part of one right here tucked in the back. There's little pockets right here and more shoved down in here along with my headlamp. This is Coast. I'll put the model number in the description. Uh, this particular model has become my favorite. It's about 430 lumens. And so I've got three different settings, bright, medium, low. Plus you can adjust it to a wide beam or a narrow beam here. But I like this part. I've got red and I've got green. So it gives me two different options for just seeing at night or if I'm tracking or a blood trail. So these little lights from Coast, 
I've been using for years. This one right now is my favorite because of the options. I got fire starting stuff here. I've got another ferro rod, same as the one that was in my pocket and striker right here. Gather resources as you travel. So I have uh, three or four nice pieces of fat wood down in here. And if I use them, I will replenish them the next time I come to a fatwood source. One of these little Exotac emergency candles, which I have the SOL heat sheet uh, emergency blanket down in here. I've done a video wrapped up in it with a little candle and just puts out a tremendous amount of heat. Great way to stay warm. Another little Altoids tin down in here of cotton balls saturated with petroleum jelly and Exotac case around a big lighter. Backup light source, little Olight. This is the small one that has 180 lumens. Uh, I'll put the model number in the description. I can't remember what this model number is, but it's the one with 180 lumens. It's their, I think they're about their smallest ones. Multi-tool, my favorite, the Leatherman rebar. Uh, there have been times I've used it as used the wire cutters, so it's a great tool to have out here. And just in case, the only way I can get water is right out of you know, a small, tiny source. Maybe there's a small crevice. I've been in that situation where down in a couple rocks, the water was coming up from out of the ground, but there was no way to really scoop it up into a container. So I have my little Hydro Blue Sidekick, which has the carbon attachment on the end to get rid of chemicals, pesticides, and things. Extra batteries down in here in the zippered pocket. For the flashlight and the headlamp and just a little uko spork for eating with and let's see is there anything else i think that's it for the back pocket all stuff that i pretty much enjoy using like i said there's if i wanted to make it lighter i could you know narrow it down to one light source uh, probably carry some less cordage take a little less food. There's things I could move in and out, but I'll put these back in here. These are things I enjoy having. And again, the weight is less than 8% of my body weight. So I can really, I can, I can run with this pack. It's not too heavy for me to run with. So that's perfect. Uh, in the small, pocket up on top rather than having a first aid kit attached to the outside of this pack like I do on my winter pack I have more stuff around the outside uh, just to keep it more streamlined I divided everything into baggies so this one is band-aids tape gauze pads uh, there's some wound seal in here in case I get a bad one This one has all of the ointments, um, antibiotics, cleaning pads, burn gel, getting burned in the fire, alcohol prep pads, things like that. And then um, some Advil tucked down in the back. All right, let's open up the main compartment. And I like this design because it clamshells out. So you can see that it just opens right up. Then I have a zippered pocket here, mesh pocket, and a zip zippered pocket here. This top one has I have wet ones for cleaning pitch and stuff off my hands. Also, it will clean my cup after I have cooked with it. Uh, emergency drink mix. I keep these in all my kits and packs. 
I like having those, extra vitamin C, zinc if you buy the immune support one, um, insect repellent down in here, which I recently uh, used on my survival challenge because the mosquitoes were crazy down when I found water. And it is summer, but I carry this pack. As we transition from winter into spring and it starts to warm up nice, until the fall when the weather starts to cool, I will carry this pack. So is the, there is some crossover, like this morning. You see I'm in a long sleeve shirt. It is completely overcast. Temperature is right around like 48, 49 degrees. So it's a little bit of a chill. Uh, so a couple of hot hands. Again, just in case during those, that transition phase and an SOL heat sheet. So wrapping up with this and the candle inside is a great heat source. Uh, for food, I happen to have a peak one. I'm gonna do a review on these shortly, but in, I usually carry either Mountain House or peak one, uh, chicken alfredo pasta. This is dinner. Breakfast, I make up my own little breakfast packs. I need to do a review on this for you guys because I this is something that's really cool that just fuels my fire energy. It's full of vitamins, protein, fats, um, really healthy nutrients, carbohydrates. I have Carnation Instant Breakfast Drink. I have four spoonfuls of powdered milk, so I'll stir that up in my cup. And... A pro meal bar. These things run about 400 calories. Can you guys hear that? I got an entire pack of coyotes on the hill behind me howling. They just took off. They've, they're on something. Nice. I hope you guys can hear that. So many times I've been out here recently, early in the morning like this. It's In fact, every time has been early in the morning. And uh, the coyotes, just they're on something. Bam, the whole pack just start yipping and howling. And, and you can he hear them. They're chasing something. So uh, I saw a lot of baby deer, a lot of fawns out this morning. So I, I don't, sorry coyotes, I don't want you to be hungry, but little fawns, I hope that, uh, hope it's not you. Also saw rabbits, so it's hard to say, but uh, anyway guys, sorry that peanut butter, pro meal bar, carnation breakfast drink with milk. This thing is rocking what, close to a thousand calories with fats, protein, carbs, vitamins, minerals, extra nutrients in the, in the pro meal bar. And it weighs almost nothing. And that's it's almost a thousand calories. I mean, a couple of these, if I didn't want to do any cooking or carry anything else, three of these in my pack. And I'm fueled uh, for the entire day with almost 3,000 calories. Uh, some trail mix just for snacking on the trail. And because I will have a cold lunch. Today, I usually have Spam, MRE crackers, and cheese spread, which I will make a Spam and cheese sandwich. Top that off with some trail mix. And that covers the whole day of meals. If I'm going to stay the night, I'll uh, throw an extra breakfast or an extra one of those meals I just showed you in here. Because this pack is carried in the transition, again, uh, stocking hat nice wool heavy cap and wool gloves and these will also go with me in my winter pack i will just move them over <clears throat> last oh there's a couple items up on top i forgot there's a zippered pocket right here that goes down inside i can't again it's fire season uh, 
July, August, September, half of October usually, I can't have any fire unless it's, you know, to save my life. So sleeping by a fire is out of the question, so I don't worry about wool. I carry something that's light and doesn't take up a lot of room in the pack. This is the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. I will just snuggle up in it, and it uh, blocks the wind, blocks the rain. Of course, I'll be under my tarp, but keeps me plenty warm in this kind of weather. I will dress appropriately with some extra shirts. If my head gets cold, I'll put on the stocking cap. If my hands get cold, I'll put on the gloves. Wrap up in this, and if, that, and if I get a chill, I'll put the SOL heat sheet around me first, and then this around that, and that really locks in a lot of warmth. And my uh, sleep pad that I have is reflective on one side, so I will put that inside with me. So body heat reflected, body heat trapped, really warm. <clears throat> the little Pathfinder tarp that I just reviewed and mentioned, this thing, I am so pleased after getting the chance to use it during that mountain rain. Water didn't leak anywhere around any of the seams around the stitching it rained heavy uh, i actually had it set up in in a configuration where i had an awning so water was pooling up on the awning and every once in a while i'd knock it off but uh just performed excellent guys you did a good job on this one coglin tent stakes just shoved in a leather pouch and i had Another little pouch here that I moved out of the way. Hang on just a second, guys. I gotta locate where I put this. Sorry about that. This slid down in front of me. Uh, just a little camo pouch. This has my ridge line, which is about 25 feet long, parachute cord. Uh, there's some Prusik loops, which I left attached to it. And That's funny, there's a black ant down inside here from my last outing. I had this laying down on the ground. And uh, one of those big old black wool carpenter ants crawled in it. And he's been in my pack with me since the last outing. So I have an extra snack. <laughs> but extra um, bank line that I might use to tie off <clears throat> the tarp the corners or something if I'm doing an awning like I did on my last setup. And then lastly, forgot to mention that, that zippered pocket comes down inside here. I have uh, some parachute cord ready to go to hang the pack on the side of a tree. Binoculars so I can uh, view the wildlife, the elk, the deer, the coyotes, whatever I see. Sky Genius, little 10 by, are they 10 or 8? 8, little 8 by 21 Sky Genius on Amazon. But they are crystal clear and for the price, work really, really well. And lastly, because so it's easy to get to, my compass. Which is just the which is the Sunto. Uh, can't remember the model number, but it's the one with the mirror and everything that folds out. And uh, I wish I could remember the model number on that, guys. Sorry about that, but it is the one again with the mirror, the adjustable bezel, and everything. And. That's it. That is the loadout. So this is, again, my summer pack. Um, right now, the way it's set up, um, it's around 18-ish pounds, 18 and a half. Again, I've had it down to 16 and a half. I've had it up closer to 20 just by taking out or adding a few minor things. But very, very comfortable for me. You know, less than 8% of my body weight so I can move light fast and even run with it. And this will get me through all of my summer outings, you know, and I'm not, it's not just a survival pack, guys. It's, it's the stuff that I like to have when I'm out here to do projects, when I'm making, you know, a bushcraft bed or 
carving something, kicking back, putting up, you know, different things, early spring. And uh, when fall comes and I can start having fires, building tripods, cooking, this is just uh, all the stuff that I need to have fun out here too. And usually 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm not out here uh, surviving. I'm out here just having fun. <laughs> but again, winter, things change. Things get a lot heavier with canvas and wool, more food, uh, cooking pot for cooking more elaborate meals, and uh, building a base camp. Winter, for me, is about having a base camp going out and exploring and stuff but always coming back to that base camp where in the summer it's just travel travel light stay wherever i feel at night different philosophy different different way of enjoying the outdoors i love the winter having a base camp shelter with a big long fire sitting back in the middle of a blizzard under my shelter watching the snow come down and drinking hot cocoa feeling the warmth of the fire different ways to enjoy nature but anyway guys i'll try to put some of the gear in the description if i miss something that you're curious about uh let me know and i'll try to get you the information and you know, everything that i'm carrying i'm enjoying and like and it's stuff that uh you know the tarps new because of self-reliance i i mean because of uh bushcraft outfitters shutting down I don't have my poncho in this kit because rain is so rare right now that if it does rain, I just throw up the tarp and kick back and enjoy. But uh, fall and spring when we get heavy rains, then, you know, there's another uh, half a pound to throw in, 10 ounces of a poncho. Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft, get out of there. I'm not taking another ant home. One's enough. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hope you like the little loadout. Take care, everybody, and enjoy yourselves. And when winter comes, I will break out the winter pack, which right now is also a 511 tactical, but it is the uh, Rush 72. It is the big one. So take care, everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Really appreciate your support, guys. Thanks.